Okay, uh, in this video we're going to go over factoring expressions using the distributive property. Specifically, we're just dealing with binomials right now, which means there's two terms, um, but we can factor bigger um, in trinomials and other polynomials if we, as we go future in math. So, to start with, let's recall a little bit about the distributive property. Um, the distributive property, if I had five times, I'm going to use numbers for just a second just to visualize, five times three uh, plus two, let's say five times three plus two. Well, we can do three plus two is five, and then five times five is 25. You can see that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we can also show five times three plus two means I have three plus two, and then I have five of these, five, five of these, right? So five times three plus two, that means I have three plus two, three plus two, three plus two, three plus two, and three plus two. That's five times three plus two. If I were to add all this up, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, plus two, four, six, eight, ten, you can see that uh, you can see that, that equals 25. That's another way of looking at this. Uh, the distributive property would save us that time and say, here is 5 times 3, that gives us 15. Here's 5 times 2, that gives us 10. 15 plus 10 equals 25. Okay, now what we're doing is factoring is we're trying to go the other way. Let's say we already had 15 plus 10, and we wanted to know what we could factor out. So we can see that the greatest common factor of 15 and 10 is indeed 5. And so if we were to work this in reverse, 15 divided, uh, we're going to take out a 5, so we're going to put the 5 on the outside, and 15 divided by 5 would be our 3 on the inside, and 10 divided by this 5 would be the 2, and so if we started with this and we went to factor the greatest common factor out, this is how, what we would end up with. So again, obviously, this isn't as useful for us in num in, with using all numbers usually, although there are probably a few cases where that might uh, help you do some mental math. Now we're going to deal with um, variables and terms that aren't just only constants. So I have negative 6x, I'm doing this problem here, negative 6x, and then I'm going to have a minus 4, okay? So just like we did with the numbers, we're going to try to make even groups. So maybe you can see that negative 6x could be broken down into two groups such as negative 3x and negative 2 and another negative 3x and another negative 2. Basically what I'm doing is taking out or, or dividing this into two groups. Okay, so I'm going to take out a 2. So if I take out a 2, 2 uh, negative 6x divided by 2 would be a negative 3x and negative 4 divided by 2 would be negative 2, and we can check our answer. Does it equal our original problem? Well, 2 times negative 3x is negative 6x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Another thing I could have noticed is I just could see, wait a minute, I have a negative in both of these, so actually I can factor out a negative 2. And if I were to do that, if I factor out a negative 2, then negative 6x divided by negative 2 would give us a positive 3x, negative 4 divided by negative 2 would give us a positive 2. All three of those way, ways of writing this are basically equivalent. That means they're equal. And there are cases as we go to solve problems where we would prefer to see it in expanded form and then prefer to see it factored out. Okay, let's try a few more. This time I'm not going to do the algebra tiles, we'll just 
do the best we can using the numbers. 5x plus 20. Okay, so we're looking at these two terms here. We're thinking, what is the greatest common factor of 5x and 20? Okay, hopefully you can see, looks like it's going to be a 5. We're going to pull out a positive 5. 5x five divided by 5 is x. This is the 5 we pulled out. 20 divided by 5 is a positive 4. And here we are factoring um, this expression. Okay, let's do another one. Here we are with a negative x and negative 7. Hopefully this looks familiar to something we just did a little bit earlier. Um, there's no coefficient here, so there's no number. So the best that we can do is to factor out a negative 1. So if we factor out a negative 1, negative x divided by negative 1 is positive x. Negative 7 divided by 1 is positive 7. Again, it's always good to go back and check your answer. Negative 1 times x is indeed negative x. Negative 1 times 7 is indeed negative 7. Okay, now here's a even maybe more difficult one to sum, or at least intimidating. What do we what can we factor out here? Well, here we have uh, we need to do one more step before we factor something out. I think that when we're dealing with fractions, it's typically easier or better to start with a common denominator, right? So let's change this negative one half into negative two fourths. Hopefully you'll see why we did that in just a minute. These two mean the same expression, we've just rewritten it a little bit different way. Now we notice, well, we this is Essentially, another way of thinking of this is 3x divided by 4. Another way of thinking of this is 2 divided by 4. So we can see both of these are being divided by 4. Okay, so if we're dividing by, um, shouldn't have reset. 3x divided by 4 and 2, negative 2 divided by 4. Another way of thinking of this is 3x times 1 fourth and 2 times 1 fourth. Hopefully that's not too confusing. We can factor out this 1 fourth. Okay? Um, the more you do this, the more you won't be able, you won't have to go through all of these steps. You'll just be able to see, oh, I'm going to factor out 1 fourth. Okay, so when I factor out that 1 fourth, I'm left with 3x minus 2 and the 1 fourth on the outside. Last step, let's check, right? 1 fourth times 3x is 3 fourths x, right? Or 3x over 4, same thing. 1 fourth times negative 2 is going to be negative 2 halves of negative 2 fourths which is the same as negative one half. Okay, uh, I realize that this is gonna take practice and this was a short and quick video, so if you have to, please rewatch it and try a few more practice problems on your own, but I hope at least you found something useful. Thanks for watching.